Welcome to what is the reference line in OpenDrive. My name is Nico and in this video I will talk about the key concept in OpenDrive, the reference line. To build roads in OpenDrive you will always need that reference line. Nearly all features that are important are attached to this reference line. Lanes for example and they are quite important for driving. In this video you will learn what the reference line is and how to design the reference line in OpenDrive. We will start with a short recap about the hierarchy of OpenDrive and then look at the basic structure of the XML file and find the correct place to define our reference line. Once we will have that, I will give you a quick overview about the different coordinate systems in OpenDrive, followed by the elements for, for the reference line. Then we will see what OpenDrive offers us to model the reference line itself. Let's recapture the role of the reference line in OpenDrive. To know the basic shape of any road in OpenDrive, you need a reference line. The reference line defines how the road bends and turns from a bird's eye perspective, or as the tag is called, the plan view. The reference line is the one thing you will not get around when dealing with OpenDrive. So lanes are attached to the reference line, as well as signals, for example. And they are positioned according to that reference line, as we can see here. Now let's check out where in the XML structure the plan view is located. This is the high-level XML structure of OpenDrive. And I made a video on what is OpenDrive where I'm explaining what each element in this structure is for. I will post a link in the video description and at the end of this video. Each road has its own reference line, as said before, which is located in the plan view element, what you can see here. To define the form of the reference line, geometric primitives are used. And before we jump into details, let's quickly go through the coordinate systems OpenDrive is working with. In OpenDrive, we will use three different coordinate systems. The inertial coordinate system, everything is living within this system. You could also call this the world system. Then we have the reference line system. This is a Frenet coordinate system and your reference lines defining the s-axis of this system. And last but not least, we have the local system. And in this we are defining objects which can then be placed in other systems with a insertion point. So while this is still quite abstract, let's see how this is all interconnected. The inertial system is the basis and everything is defined within this system. Obviously we want to define roads. So let's start with the road definition in the inertial system. And the start point of each reference line element is defined in the local system and has some x, y coordinates for the starting point. In this example here, that would be x equals 2.5 and y equals 1. Many features are attached to the reference line, like the object representing the poles a sign is sitting on. In this case, the object is defined in its own Cartesian coordinate system, the local system, and is inserted with an insertion point in the reference line system at a specific s and t coordinate. This is a common setup on how the coordinate systems are being used in OpenDrive. In OpenDrive, there's also a convention on how pitch, roll, and heading are being used. I will explain this on the example of the inertial system. Let's see how pitch, roll, and heading are applied on the example of a cube, starting with no rotation. Heading is a rotation around the z-axis of the system, as we can see in this image now. Pitch is a rotation about the y-axis. The reference line system has no pitch, which is very important to remember. And roll is a rotation around the x-axis. In case of the local system, this is the u-axis, and the reference line system, this is the s-axis. The reference line system has only a heading and roll. There is no pitch for the reference line system. When it comes to elevation of rolls, this is very, very important, and I will make a dedicated video just on this. Next up, we are going to see how actually we can define the reference line. There are several different elements in OpenDrive for defining the reference line. The first one is a line element. And as the name says, it is a straight line with a starting point, a heading, a length. And when driving over this line, the steering angle of the vehicle is not changing over time. Once we want to design curves, the steering angle is something we need to keep in mind. In OpenDrive, you can define spirals. These elements have a start and an end curvature. So you can define smooth transitions in terms of curvature and this avoids jumps in the steering angle. So when driving over these elements, there is a change of the steering angle over time. For actually going around a corner with a constant steering angle, OpenDrive lets you define an arc. 
a piece of reference line with a constant curvature. These three elements are really good when modeling open drive networks by hand using available tools. It is also a common use case that you want to derive your net reference line from measurement data. Here it comes in handy when you have equations for your reference line with parameters for optimization. OpenDrive offers the cubic polynom for this. Unfortunately, this method was deprecated in OpenDrive 1.6. And because there is a better solution, the parametric cubic polynom, or as the tag is called, parampoly3. This is a function and the steering angle changes accordingly when driving over this element. So each reference line element has the following attributes. We have a heading, we have the length, we have the S position of this element in the road definition, and we have the XY coordinates defining the starting point of that reference line element. And of obviously with that where it is located in the inertial system. So as we know now what elements we can use and how they are defined, we can also check out a few examples and that is what we will do now. The line element is the simplest one. And as you can see here, all you need are the following attributes. So we need the S element to indicate where the reference line coordinate system has its base, and this is S equals four. Then we specify the X and Y coordinates. In this case, this is pointing where does our reference line element start in the inertial coordinate system. And in this example here, this is X equals minus 47.2 and Y equals 0.723. Next, what we define is the heading. So we know where our reference line element is heading to. And that heading only specifies the heading of the very first point of that reference line element. And if we define anything else than a line, the heading at the end of the element will definitely differ from the heading at the start of the element. And now we add the length. And the length specifies how long is that reference line element. In case of a line, that is really simple. And to indicate that this is a line, we now just add the line tag. The spiral, as mentioned before, has a changing curvature. And so we need to define how this curvature changes and therefore a start and an end curvature. In OpenDrive, the curvature change is linear and that is very important. In addition, we again have the attributes S, X, Y, heading and the length. The arc has a constant curvature. And therefore, the steering angle when driving on this part will not change. To define an arc, you need to specify, as always, S, X, Y, heading and length, and the curvature within an arc element. These three elements, as said before, are the ones you would most likely use when you design your roads by hand. Next, we will check out the parametric cubic polynom, which is used in many cases to fit the reference line to measurement data. This piece of reference line is defined in a local coordinate system. The values for the u and the v-axis are calculated by two individual equations. Let me show you how this works. First, you calculate the values for the u-axis. I'm now using the ones from the example before. And the result is nearly a straight line. And that is what you could expect when looking at the parameters. The equation we are using here is a third order polynom. And the parameters are placed within that polynom as you can see below the graph. Next, we calculate the values for the v-axis, and again, using the values from the example. And what we do here, and this is what you can see on the vertical axis, you see the u or the v values, while on the horizontal axis, you can see the p values we're using to go through the equations. And here, I took a thousand sample points for our reference line elements. So once we did this, and we do have those two graphs, or in that case values for u and v, we can merge them together. And let's check out how that looks like. Now we can apply the u values to the horizontal axis and the v values to the vertical axis. And this is our reference line element. Now all that is left to do is apply the heading and place that piece of reference line in the inertial system, according to the x and y coordinates given in the definition. Let's have a look at a simple example where we're adding a line to spirals and two arcs together to form a nice and smooth reference line. First, we place a straight line in our inertial system. Next, we attach a spiral to it to achieve the curvature we need for our curve. And that is represented by an arc. As our curve now opens a little bit, we need to adapt the curvature. And for that, we're going to apply a spiral, which is followed by another arc to represent our curve. 
And this is a very smooth reference line without any jumps in the curvature, and we can easily drive over this reference line. So when adding elements of the reference line together to form a smooth reference line, we need to make sure that the heading at the end of each element is identical to the heading at the beginning of the next element. And this is very important. So in our case, the heading of the line element should be identical to the heading of the spiral as it start. And the heading of the arc element needs to be identical to the heading of the spiral element at its end. If the heading is not identical at these connection points, then we will cause a jump in the steering angle of any vehicle driving over this reference line. Now you have a basic idea how the reference line in OpenDrive works and what you need to consider when designing your reference line. But still, there's a lot more to discover. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed this video. So thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, consider to like and subscribe and see you the next time.